Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review The Virtuoso. And this is from director Nick Stagliano, starring Anson Mount, Abby Cornish, and Sir Anthony Hopkins. And this is a new action thriller, crime thriller, focusing on a hitman who has a job go very wrong and winds up going, getting sent on this mission to find this other hitman, rogue hitman, called White River. And Anson Mount is this hitman who had a big rough of, a bit of rough patch there, and Anthony Hopkins is his mentor. And you have all these characters in this film because, you know, Anson Mount's name is the virtuoso, you have the waitress, you have the mentor, you have the loner, you have the deputy. So basically, they're just these characters, these caricatures. And... <laughs> multiple times in this film, they really just, in a cheesy, obnoxious way, incorporate the title into the film. And I was just literally sitting there watching this film, and you have Anson Mountain doing all this voiceover, and I'm just like, jokingly, it's like, they call me the virtuoso. And boy, did I not expect him to actually say that, and he did. And I'm like, this feels so forced and awkward. But, you know, there it is. And it comes back around later. Speaking of which, this film felt like I was watching an audiobook for the first 25 minutes of this film. There is non-stop talking for the most part. There is so much, like, noir-style voiceover from Anson Mount. And it's not exactly the strongest voiceover. It feels kind of flat. So it's not really the most engaging and it's just like basically him doing all of this exposition dump on what it what it's like, what you need to do as a uh, hitman. And you have this like opening scene where he's just talking over it and this woman's having the most unenthusiastic sex with this man and he just straight shoots the guy <laughs> during sex. And, you know, Anson Mount's continuing to talk through the whole time and then he has a moment at a cemetery with Anthony Hopkins, and then I realized that Anthony Hopkins was straight telling a story for like five minutes. And I don't even think that's an exaggeration, straight five minutes of him just talking, telling the story. I'm like, this is a movie, show don't tell. And it just kept going throughout the film. There's just so much voiceover, but I have to say, when they first showed Anthony Hopkins at his desk and he has these sunglasses on, I'm like, pretty cool. And, you know, I was intrigued listening to him tell this story, even though I was consciously and consciously thinking about, oh my God, when's he going to be done with this story? But, you know, it's Anthony Hopkins and he commits to it. And you're going through this film, definitely towards the beginning, it feels a little drabber with some inspired camera work. But as the film went on, I feel like it did get a little bit more artistic and using shadows and a little bit more impressive in terms of a visual standpoint. But there's one particular moment, the emotional crux of the film that kind of like sends us on this mission is because Anson Mount messes up on the job. And it's a result of a him shooting a car, ramming into like this van, and cars don't explode like this, and then the this amazingly terrible CGI fire on somebody with this horrible canned scream, and the very next scene Anson mounts like shrieking, and it feels so awkward and unearned and weird, because he's so very flat, like, he, I don't think Anson Mount gives a great performance in this, but he looks the part. And I guess that's what they're going for. But you just end, not only did they have this cheesy thing, but right after, he has a flashback to it in the very next scene. I'm like, we literally just saw this. Stop torturing us with this horrible CGI fire and these canned screams. And just overall, there's just so much talking and so much exposition in this film up until like maybe the second half where it cools down a bit, but you even get to a point in the film where you're like, oh, maybe I think they're finally done the voiceover here, but nope, nope, keep going, because we need to talk at you a little bit more. And you have Anthony Hopkins, who I think gives a fine performance in his supporting role. Abby Cornish, I think, gives a really fine performance. You have David Moores and Eddie Marson, who give some strong performances as well in these supporting roles. 
And then you have a slow start, but it does bring in an intriguing mystery building up throughout the film of who this uh, white river is. And I was enjoying it. I was engaged a bit. And, you know, you had some intriguing interactions between Mount and Marston and Mount and Morse and some solid thrills here. But you start having this budding relationship with Abby Cornish, this waitress, and Anson Mount, and don't really, don't really buy it. And then, you know, they have sex, naked, and you get to see Abby Cornish completely topless. I'm like, some of these things didn't really feel necessary, but you know, they threw it in there. But in the end, I feel like I didn't really feel invested in that, re uh, that relationship, and where it winds up going is a little bit unexpected and more interesting than it was. But I still feel like this film feels too slow, and... I think it has some solid surprises towards the end and some unexpected moments. But in general, I feel like this film is a still decently forgettable and just watchable kind of action thriller, this crime thriller. And if this is something that you're really into, you might get some enjoyment out of this crime thriller. If this really isn't your kind of thing, I don't think this is going to film the be the film to change your mind and really pull you in. But those are my thoughts on The Virtuoso. Let me know what you think. Let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.